um, the message is basically there's going to be some sort of automated voice transmission. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it means. Um, well, I, I think it means it could be to do with some sort of emergency, um, autom automatically transmitted, TVs, radio, internet, also the don't even know exists. What is the Black Awakening? Well, that is, um, is a concept that an that underground Satanist, a really highly trained uh, military side Satanist, uh, conveyed to me years ago. And I checked on it years and years uh, after that with many of the other um, folks that we've worked with. It's their terminology. It's their concept of a coming massive anarchy chaos that they've been plotting for 60 years that they've been working this close from the old Nazi regime to this very day. They believe in a new world order, a new globalism, but they've got to create massive chaos, massive anarchy to collapse society, economic, the economic side, uh, the power grids, the, the food uh, chain, uh, to literally collapse the United States in order to make room for the rise of the Antichrist, in their view, and the rise of globalism. National Security Agency. I don't know if you read about him um, in, a, in some kind of machinery they developed where he was to be connected to receive messages from some kind of extra dimensional presence, but he wasn't allowed to be out. He had to completely go passive. He couldn't question it. He couldn't be critical. He couldn't uh, ask it even questions. It was just he had to be the recipient and be willing to let it come in. That's part of what program splitting the personality of a human's will to it, it literally brings them to zero point path you know into that passivity to where they can impose the programming that the demonic presence then can literally just you know uh, saturate itself in right set up no shop yeah set up shop you know isn't it interesting because the early sensory deprivation tanks etc were designed to put people into that state so that they could be absolutely programmed with no inhibitions and no uh, no form of natural resistance. So, you know, I, let me ask you this. Have you had any contemporary uh, word from the Lord on why the switch over to HDTV? And, and this is critical because it, it's my contention that they're going to have to put us into a, an electromagnetic passive flux in order for uh, the entities that are going to be released, you know, to have their full authority to just slaughter uh, mercilessly. Are, have you given any thought about that? Here's the thought I've given to that. People have asked me over the years, Russ, what, because we, we've dealt with local individuals where we learned the trigger or another personality inside gave us the trigger and we spoke it. We, we did this in learning. We, we were learning this along the way. And all of a sudden, boom, this personality comes up, you know, you screw, what are you doing? You know, you're not, we're not even supposed to be here. We're, we're not supposed to know these secrets. All this kind of stuff. Now, we've learned what triggers are. They can come on over the phone, just simply tones. They can be sent. Uh, just like a dog that can hear a sound and we can't, they also have this ability, you know, and especially the phone. It, not just tones, but when we used to hear this little blip of, uh, of a sound when we did some surveillance. What it was was a microburst, speeded up language in either Chinese or in, in like Spanish, some other language that was like a microburst that a sub-personality could pick up and literally kind of download it, listen to it, know what it said. We just thought it was a blip on the phone. And when you say this TV thing, yeah, I kept questioning why we're all demanding to move to this. Um, in some of those military ones we've gone over the years, I've real, I mean, we've spent thousands of hours in discussions at lakesides, in buildings, in secret places where they wanted to meet, uh, scary places. See, where we, we had to bring people with weapons because um, we were concerned at that time, back in those days anyway. And we heard them, you know, they talked to us about I, I said, well, I, I'd ask them, how are they going to release, you know, tens of thousands of you all at one time in this Black Awakening thing, this chaos? And they looked at me and smiled. It's two things. It's a spiritual release, demonic presence that literally awakens the sleepers within. But they said, Russ, you know, just simply, you know, tones, the concept of tones. If we, if we have something nationwide 
that can put out, you know, a particular sound or a set of sounds or a code that all of these individuals are coded by. That's all it's going to take to wake up thousands of them at one time. Or Gwen Towers with some sonic or infrasonic uh, programming uh, keys. Sure. I think Russus is critical, okay, because look at the look at the compression of time. See, I think he just gave everybody the answer, and I, I can't tell you how much uh, uh, emails or how many, forgive me, how many. That is the technology for an infrasound, okay, or a carrier signal or a carrier wave. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Russ quoted the scripture with Jesus would build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Interestingly enough, one of the ways the gates are activated are with sound. I do not know the sounds. I don't know, you know, that uh, I was never told that, but uh, the point is, is that sound is the way it's activated. So is it then feasible, Russ, that with the lateness of the hour, and they almost panic like, hey, we'll pay you to do this, that that will be, if you will, the carrier trigger to unloose all of these entities. Uh, yeah, it can be. And I, and I want to say this would be a mix, uh, because they believe, whether we believe this or not, they clearly believe they can, just like they can conjure a demonic presence and put it on an object, give it to an individual to where that presence begins to affect them, to, you know, like toxic waste almost, because that presence has gotten into, you know, into their room or into their home or into their church. They love doing this kind of thing. Well, now to carry us over to technology. Um, I, I have no question that some technology that we have has been given by extra-dimensional presence. Where do ideas come from? They, in a scientist, in a lab worker, you know, in a military lab worker, in, uh, in technicians, they get ideas in their heads. Some of them wake up with dreams that come. Talk briefly from your understanding about what happens when the abyss is opened up. Sure, and I've had a number of these individuals that they can't wait for it to be opened up. They, they're looking forward to it. Absolutely, um, but but you're getting you're getting supernatural testimony from the the denizens of hell themselves that the abyss is ready to open. There's an agitation. Is that a good word? There's definitely agitation. Now, what I've said on this series is the abyss is not the problem. What comes out of the abyss is the problem. Absolutely. And the key, you and I know that the idea of a key is they've gotten the right, the authority somehow. The, the, the whether again just like Satan is falling you know Satan got the authority to come into the world it's the Greek word exousia meaning a temporal but, but given authority Jesus, Satan said it to Jesus it's been given to me some of them wake up with dreams that come in their head and they figure something out and they begin to build their piece of technology I'm convinced I am utterly convinced just like those arrows in Ephesians 6 where they're sent in, you know, in against the Christians. We understand that as Christians. Involuntary thoughts, you know, thrust into our heads, communicating to us, oh, God doesn't love you, God, you know, you're, you're not going to do good, you're weak. You can, all those lies that come in, I believe the same thing would occur in a person who does not have the Spirit of God or that might even be open to New Age alternative spirituality, that involuntary thoughts ideas concerning technology that eventually becomes, well, it's all moving global. So I have to look at this and say, I wonder whether there's a connection, where there's demonic, where they know how to put demonic presence in and upon this that will, that will be attached to that carrier wave. Well, the, the battle is, the battle is, how should I say this, increasing at a magnitude. Sometime in late 1980, Colonel Paul E. Vallely, the commander of the 7th Psychological Operations Group, United States Army Reserve, Presidio of San Francisco, California, co-authored a discussion paper which was received wide and controversial attention within the U.S. military, particularly within special operations community. The paper was titled, From PSYOP to Mind War, the psychology of victory, and it presented a Machiavellian scheme for waging perpetual psychological warfare against friend and enemy populations alike, and even against the American people. The Mind War paper was provoked by an article by Lieutenant Colonel John Alexander, which appeared in the 1980 edition of Military Review, 
advocating the introduction of ESP, extrasensory perception, telepathic behavior modification, parapsychology, psychokinesis, mind over matter, remote viewing, out-of-body experiences, and other New Age and occult practices into U.S. military intelligence. Alexander's paper was titled, The New Mental Battlefield, Beam Me Up Spock. General Mike Aquino wrote From PSYOP to Mind War with Colonel Paul E. Vallely, The Psychology of Victory. Aquino's thesis stated that enemy populations could be subdued by inflicting a state of psychological terror and feelings of imminent destruction. Shock and awe, in other words. He discusses the use of psychotronic weapons or electronic weapons that influence the mind. Capitulation could be induced without firing a shot by using signals piggybacked on broadcasts of radio, TV, microwave com and microwave communications to influence through subliminal suggestion, holograms, voice to skull and silent sound technologies to manipulate the feelings and thoughts of the target population. During the 1960s and 70s he was prominent in the Church of Satan and a close friend of Anton LaVey until he started his own Church of Set. Anton LaVey was the originator of the Church of Satan. A police intelligence report dated July 1, 1980 reads, quote, The Church of Set is a group of hundreds of members that operates on a national level. Aquino is the official head of the organization and rules through a council of nine who are in fact his lieutenants. End quote. At least two mem members of the Council of Nine at that time were members of Army Intelligence. In the late 1980s, Aquino was accused by the San Francisco Police Department of being involved in a satanic child molestation ring centered on the Presidio military base where Aquino was stationed at the time. Probable victims were numbered at 68, many of whom had contracted venereal disease. Twenty-two families filed $66 million in claims against the Army, claiming that criminal charges against Aquino were dropped due to pressure from the Army. Aquino reportedly rented the German castle where the Nazi SS was formed and reenacted the secret ceremony among fellow spooks decked out in full Nazi regalia. General Aquino is now one of the highest ranking officers in the NSA. The Strategic Studies Institute of the U.S. Army War College produced a paper in 1994 entitled The Revolution in Military Affairs and Conflict Short of War. A Revolution in Military Affairs, RMA, is mentioned that will not only change the nature of warfare but also alter the global geopolitical balance of power. An example of a revolution in military affairs is the invention of gunpowder or atomic weapons, in short, an innovation that turns the world upside down. The authors of this paper, Metz and Kivit, claim behavior modification is a key component of peace enforcement, and modification will be directed at the American people. This will take place, the authors state, through directed energy systems whose primary advantage is deniability. They are straightforward about the unlimited possibilities inherent inherent in, per in perception molding through the use of psychotechnologies. Anyone who objects to this kind of mind warping will be identified